I think that there is a question that deserves a great deal of thought and reflection. And that is, what does a Christian do in response to something like this? And the reason that I bring this up is not because it's something that I thought up. It's because seeing my, as you've just seen, very zealous response to how ridiculous this mask ordinance is, I had a Christian brother actually reach out to me and talk to me about all of this, which I appreciated. And anytime anybody wants to reach out to me because they believe that I'm in error or that I've overstepped my bounds, especially, especially when they do so in the spirit of reconciliation and they're not just attacking me, they actually want to have a conversation about that and, and talk and, and have a back and forth. I always welcome that, especially when it's a Christian brother. But he was asking about whether or not it's okay for a Christian to flout the law like this. I take issue with the categorization of this being a law, and I've explained that in great detail, but, but we'll get to that in a second. So basically, my friend just reached out to me, and one of the things that he talked about is, is it okay for a Christian, especially somebody in your position that has a big platform, that kind of thing, to just say, nope, not going to wear the mask, I'm not going to do it, don't care what you do, isn't that something that is not consistent with the attitudes of a Christian or what a Christian ought to do? Because I, I'm, of, I'm of that opinion. When it comes to the mask thing, I'm not going to wear it. And, and, and I was wearing the mask previously, I was wearing it, I put it on to go vote the other day. Um, I was fine with wearing the mask back when it was a suggestion. I am not okay with it when someone is telling me I must do so. But it has a lot to do specifically with the way that this law was put into place, and I've explained that in great detail. But none of these are unreasonable questions. And in fact, these are questions that Christians ought to ask themselves when it comes to them and how they relate to the world around them and, and how they sort of uh, how they balance that idea of, of being a Christian and also being a, a uh, being a follower of Christ and also at, at what level they're supposed to be obedient to the law. And one of the things that he cited was Romans 13, 1 through 2 and 1 Peter 2, 13 through 17, which is wholly appropriate. They, they are verses that are 100% appropriate to bring up in a discussion like this. But here's the reason that those verses, which do tell Christians that they must submit to worldly authority, they must submit to the government and its rule, here's why it does not apply in this particular situation. Who is the authority in Alabama? Because it does say to submit to governing authority. And I agree. Something a Christian is commanded to do by Scripture. In this situation... Who is the authority? Well, the authority is Governor Kay Ivey. But where does Kay Ivey get her authority? Where does she derive it from? The Constitution of the state of Alabama. One of the things that makes America very, very different is that unlike other countries where they have a dictator or a monarch or even a group of people or a democracy where it's, it's just a popular vote, is that in America, the law is the supreme authority. And all of our elected officials derive their authority directly from those documents. They didn't create the documents, the documents created them. America had a constitutional convention of the states, which then created the constitution, which became the supreme law of the land. And that happened on a smaller scale, and many different times, in the state of Alabama. The governor exists because of the Constitution. The Constitution created the governor. The governor did not create the Constitution. The same is true for our elected officials in the House and the Senate and our Supreme Court judges, all of that. And so law is the ultimate authority in this situation. And so Governor Ivey has only the authority which the law has granted unto her. And so I am submitting to the authority of this land, and that authority is the law of the state of Alabama, not Governor Ivey. Now, Governor Ivey does have many very legitimate powers to act and to make decisions of governor, and when she is doing so within the purview of the power that she has been granted by the Constitution of the state of Alabama, I am more than willing to comply. 
I believe that you are actually acting in contradiction to the scripture if you refuse to comply with the, of course, obvious exception if they were acting in some way that violates God's law because that's the ultimate authority, of course. But when it comes to that, I actually am obeying and submitting to the authority of the laws of the state of Alabama. I am not doing so to Governor Ivey because she is trying to act on an authority that has not been granted to her. To help illustrate my point here, because I do recognize her authority, I just don't recognize authority that she doesn't have. A police officer is also somebody that is charged with enforcing the laws of the state. If a police officer came up to me and arrested me because I have a similar appearance to a suspect, even if he's 100% wrong, that officer still has the right to bring in people for questioning if they believe that they may be connected to a crime. And so, even though I wouldn't like it, even though I would not be a fan, I don't have the, I don't have the ability to rebel against that in a Christian way. In order to do what Jesus commands us to do, in order to do what Paul commands in Romans, you know, by the authority of Christ, I have to submit to his authority because that is an authority that has been granted to him legitimately by the law. If a police officer comes up to me and says, give me $100, well, he doesn't have the authority to do that. He has the authority to do a lot of things, and I have to submit to that authority, but he doesn't have the authority to just take money from me. That is not a th an authority that has been granted to him by the laws or by the other governing authorities in the state and in the nation. Ergo, I don't have to submit to that. Just because the person has some kind of official title or functions in society in some official capacity, that does not mean we have to do absolutely everything they say. It's not as though we're the Jim Carrey character from Yes Man where everything they ask us to do, we have to go yes. That's not what Romans 13 and 1 Peter is commanding us to do. We are to submit to legitimate worldly authority, but in America where the law is the ultimate authority, there are certain things that even an officer of the law could suggest to us that we do not have to submit to. To illustrate my point here, and this is something that is, is from the scripture, in the 25th chapter of Acts, Paul is at a tribunal where he is being tried for crimes that have been alleged uh, of him by many different people, chiefest among them the elders, uh, therefore the Jews. And he's not getting a fair trial. People are lying about him. They're, they're trying to come up with false witnesses. Like This whole thing's very clearly a kangaroo court. And a Roman official named Festus is overseeing this whole thing. And he's going back and forth with Paul. And keep in mind that Paul is not just a Jew. He's also a Roman citizen. And so what he does is he says, I appeal to Caesar. So what just happened there? Just because Festus was a Roman official did not mean that Paul had to do absolutely everything that Festus asked him to do. Paul still had rights as a Roman citizen, and he exercised those rights in the spread of the gospel. Now, my goals are not nearly as noble. I just don't like the mask mandate. I don't think that there's anything moral or scriptural about that. So I'm not trying to compare myself on that level, but what I am saying is that Paul did not surrender all of his rights as a Roman because the Bible told him that he, or the, the Holy Spirit informed him that he had to submit to authority. Now, he is submitting to authority. And like Paul, I am willing to submit to legitimate authority, but I also have the ability as an American to exercise my rights to defy authority when it has overstepped its bounds. Governor Ivey is doing something that she has absolutely no legal authority to do so. And I am also prepared to go through the proper legal channels, just as Paul was, to prove his innocence. So if I am arrested for not wearing a mask, if that is something that happens, then I will gladly submit to the Alabama court system to prove my innocence, just like Paul submitted to Caesar in order to do so. I'm not somebody that's an anarchist that just wants to tear everything down or, or run away and get away with it or anything like that. I'm fine with going through those channels. But that's something that we've got to do here. And 
a, an obvious counter argument to this and, and one that I've heard. OK, well, then you have to wear the mask until the courts hash it out. No. To go back to our police officer discussion. Does he just get to hang on to your $100 until the courts hash out that he's not allowed to steal from you? No, you have the right to deny him right then and there. He's not giving you a lawful order. You have the ability to say no. Just because he is an authority figure does not mean that you have to submit to illegitimate authority that he might claim. You know, if, if now we do this as a utility, so I'm not even sure how this works, but you know, a garbage collector is technically working for the government. You have to do absolutely everything a, a guy that is a garbage collector says. If, if he says, hey, give me the keys to your house, you have to do that. Let's take it to an even more ridiculous level. Let's use go back to a police officer again. Let's say it's a male police officer and a female uh, person that he has stopped, and he orders you to remove all your clothes. Well, he doesn't have the right to do that. It's the same thing as the $100 bill scenario. There are certain things that it is okay to resist right then and there. Is the woman supposed to just strip down and say, oh, well, I guess I'll just have to hash that out in court later? No. Christians are not obligated to submit to illegitimate authority that somebody just claims out of the blue like that. And Governor Ivey is no different in that respect. Now, ultimately, just like us, Paul was first and foremost a citizen of heaven, but that did not mean he forfeited his rights as a citizen to Rome. He used them wisely and actually was able to spread the gospel further by doing so. And that's the standard that we ought to be following. So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.